consider a Markov chain and think about how we represent the probabilities at each step in the t evolution of the Markov chain. So to be more precise, uh, remember that xi is the random variable uh, which represents the process at time step i. Represents the process at time step i. Because it's a random variable, it will have a corresponding probability distribution. So we denote that as pi n, pi i, sorry, which is the, the probability distribution of the random variable x i. Now, we would like to know, in general, what does pi i look like? And uh, intuitively, it would be nice if we had a Markov process or a chain where as i became larger, uh, pi, the probability distribution, uh, attained some kind of stability. It was not, uh, it was going to be uh, constant. So to, to think of this in a more concrete term, let's say we had uh, a typical chain of some sort uh, with these uh, bidirectional arrows which I'm not drawing and self loops, for example. And it had some distribution on the arrow, some values for the probability transitions. We'd like to know that if we had the stochastic process going far into the future from the initial state, so let's say that's the initial state and it transitioned, it went through, uh, over the very long period of time, if we were to look at the random variable xi, its corresponding probability distribution pi i was somehow stable. And so we could say this is the expected distribution of this random variable as we look at a chain that's been uh, operating for a long time. So if we have such a stability or some kind of uh, convergence property, then this chain would be thought of as being ergodic. So that's intuitively speaking what an ergodic chain is. And the nice thing is that for an ergodic chain, the probability distribution of the random variable, this one over here, is independent of the initial state that you start from. So no matter which initial state was the first state in the trajectory, over time that memory is lost and the stochastic process becomes um, uh, somehow converged into some distribution. Uh, but this may not always be the case. For example, if you have a stochastic process like this, which, is into, which has two separable chains like this, then what's going to happen is if you started in this state, you would have a certain distribution. If you started in this state, you'd have a different distribution. So even by running the stochastic process for very long periods of time, the memory of the initial state is not going to be lost. So this would be a non-ergodic uh, Markov chain. And there are other situations where you would have a non-ergodicity and the initial me memory would not be, uh, would be retained. Uh, and so in general, what we'd like to do is to come up with a set of conditions under which a chain is ergodic. And in, a, in the, we will study that next set of conditions for which a Markov chain is ergodic. If you can get the set of conditions, then what we can do is we can just test the conditions on the chain, and if they have, if they hold, then we can be sure that this particular Markov chain is going to have a convergent distribution for its expected probability distribution for its random variable uh, as the chain evolves over time. Before doing that, it's uh, worth noting there's a different notion of ergodicity which is also sometimes helpful to think about. 
And this has to do with what is called time averages versus ensemble averages. So let's say that we have some Markov chain and it has a trajectory. So let's say the Markov chain is over the states one, two, three, four. Then we know that the trajectories would look something like this, one, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, et cetera. This is just a sequence of states. And since it's a Markov chain, it's a, it can be, uh, this trajectory is infinite. And so we can uh, compute uh, certain statistics of interest. For example, what's the probability of being in state one? And this probability can be evaluated as the limit of the fraction of ones in the string. So we have a long string, and we take the lim uh, limiting value of the number of ones to the length of the string, and as this limit increases, we can view that as being the probability of being in state one. Now, this particular string over here is the trajectory that starts from state one and has a certain path. But if you were to take the same Markov chain and we were to run it again, uh, we would get a different string potentially. We could get a string that looks like this, one, four, two, three, one, three, one, et cetera. And if you do it again, you would have a different string, et cetera. So we would get a sequence of strings, each corresponding to the set of uh, to the trajectory that was taken by that Markov chain at that point in time. Now, if I had a set of trajectories like this, and I wanted to compute the probability of being in state one, I could do it as an ensemble. By let's say I pick this time instant over here. This is let's say time step number four, and then I can look at the uh, which state is the Markov chain in across each of these infinite number of trajectories at step four. And we can say, okay, that is the probability of being in straight one. And the question is, is the are these two probabilities the same? So is this ensemble average going to be the same as the time average? This is a time average. If this ensemble average and the time average are the same, then the trajectories come from an ergodic Markov chain. Whereas if these two come from a, a non-ergodic Markov chain, then these averages aren't the same. To, so for example, if I have this previous example before with these four states and I had these separable chain between these four states like this, if I were to start over here and create an infinite chain, it would look like this, one, three, one, three, one, three, et cetera, where the probability of being in state one is going to be 0 0.5. However, if I take an ensemble where the initial point could be either here or here, then uh, for those chains that start with one, three, we will have the probability of being in state one being 0.5, but for those chains that start with here, the probability of, state one, of being in state one will be zero, so the overall probability of being in state one is going to be 0 0.25. So that the ensemble average is 0 0.25, and the time average is 0 0.5, and these don't match. So this is a non-ergodic Markov chain.